protein. We all assume we get enough of it, but the data shows otherwise. Multiple studies and surveys have found that nearly 80% of the Indian population is not getting enough protein in their daily diet. We are all made of protein. Our skin, tissues, organs, muscles, all protein. Our cellular machinery makes protein to repair us all the time. Our DNA stores instructions to make proteins. That's it. Nothing else. I suggest you watch my video on the science of protein to understand why it is so crucial. In this video, we'll focus on a more practical problem. How do you measure the amount of protein in your diet by just looking at your plate? Because unless you have a sense of how much you are eating, you won't know how much extra you need to eat to stay healthy. Step zero. If you have specific medical conditions that require you to be on a low protein diet, listen to your doctor. Don't take advice from social media, including this video. Step one. Get a sense for how much protein you need in your diet. Let's keep it simple. Start with one gram of protein for every kilogram of body weight. In this video, I'm going to assume 60 kgs as a reasonable average weight. You could be less or more than that, so adjust appropriately. A 60 kg person who does not do any heavy exercise or regular running, cycling needs 60 grams of protein per day. If you do exercise, you need more. And also assume 120 grams of protein a day is the upper limit for a 60 kg person unless you're a bodybuilder. Step two, if you eat three meals a day, try and get 20 grams of protein per meal. If you eat two meals a day, try for 30 grams of protein per meal. Step three, now that we have our goal in mind, let's start counting protein. We will start with the obvious sources of protein, meat. Assume eight grams for every piece of chicken, pork, beef or mutton that you are able to eat. Not very tiny pieces, but a piece that is just below what might be too big to fit in your mouth. Think of the size of one piece of chicken tikka. If this is fish, assume 6 grams per mouthful. Then let's get to egg. Very simple. 6 grams per egg. So a 2 egg omelette, 12 grams. Then we get to paneer. For every cube of paneer, assume 4 grams of protein. So if you eat 5 pieces of paneer tikka, that's 20 grams of protein. But if you use a small cube size, then use a smaller number. If you drink a small cup of dahi, curd, raita, that's 3 grams of protein. So that's animal protein. Now let's get to plant protein. A common confusion is that when you Google for protein content in dal, chana, etc., you get the values for the uncooked dal. So when you see 38 grams of protein for 100 grams of soybean, that is raw soybean. And we can't digest raw dals. When you soak and cook them, they absorb water and that makes up most of their weight. So if you eat a cup of cooked chana, that is six grams of protein. But we often eat dal, rajma, or chana in a gravy. So in that case, assume four grams per cup-sized serving. A cup of dal, a cup of sambar, etc. Again, if it's too watery, count less. If you eat tofu, which is made from soybean, treat it like paneer. Four grams per mouthful piece. Now let's get to your staple foods. People often forget that there is protein in rice wheat and millets as well. To keep things simple, if you're a rice eater, add five grams of protein for each meal. If you don't eat that much rice, maybe use three grams. People like to claim that millets have more protein. They do, but you won't eat as much millet as you do rice. So there is no meaningful difference. When it comes to wheat, assume two grams of protein per chapati and two grams per slice of bread. If you eat upma, which is made of suji, assume 5 grams. Assume 2 grams of protein for each idli or homemade dosa. And finally, vegetables. Even they contain small amounts of protein. For every cup size serving, add 2 grams of protein. Some broad disclaimers. People don't measure their food with weighing scales and cup sizes vary widely. So when it comes to protein, if you're doubtful when you're counting, 
use a smaller number. Eating extra protein is always good for you. So let us summarize all this in a single table. And I've included a link from where you can print this out or save it to your mobile. Now let's put it to practice. I am going to show you some standard Indian meals and then count the amount of protein in it. Remember, our goal is 20 grams per meal. Let's start with breakfast. Let's assume you eat two idlis. That's only four grams of protein. And upma might add four to five grams. Two puris will get you four to five grams. Indian breakfasts tend to be low on protein. So keep that in mind. What about a biryani meal with raita? With one chicken piece and one egg. Five grams from rice, eight grams from chicken, six grams from egg, two grams from raita, 21 grams total. So that's enough protein for a meal, but keep in mind, it's also a lot of calories from carbohydrates and fat. Now, let's consider a typical thali from South or East India. Five grams from rice, four grams from dal or sambar, one fish fry, six grams of protein. One vegetable side dish, two grams. One cup curd, three grams, 20 grams of protein. If the meal was special and had a meat or fish curry, it'll be 24 to 25 grams of protein. Now, a rice-based vegetarian thali. Again, five grams from rice, four grams from sambar or dal, two grams from vegetables, three grams from curd. So that's 14 grams. So if you are vegetarian, you have to be a little conscious and add a cup of chana rajma or paneer to make up for the shortage. Now let's see a North Indian thali. Three chapatis, one dal, one sabji, one cup curd or dahi. So six grams from chapatis, four grams from dal, two grams from the sabji and three grams from the dahi, 15 grams of protein. So add some paneer and you're good to go. And finally, sometimes people don't have the time to cook four to five dishes and will eat something simple like dal or rajma chawal or roti dal. A meal like that will approximately get you 10 to 12 grams of protein. A few practical tips. It is not that hard to get protein from your food if you eat many different things. If you're vegetarian, you need to be a little more mindful. That's all. A cup of curd is very practical at every meal. But in many cases, eating paneer and chana in every meal may not be practical. Paneer comes with a lot of fat and chana rajma can cause bloating. And you may not like the taste of tofu. So science-based nutritionists suggest that you can use a supplement like whey or plant-based protein powder to make up for any gap you might have on a daily basis. A typical cup size serving of protein powder is 25 grams of protein. If you're someone who only eats twice a day, then getting 30 grams of protein from every meal might be tough. So go ahead and supplement. In conclusion, this video is primarily aimed at normal, average people who may not work out in the gym five days a week and want to make sure that they are getting enough protein for basic body maintenance. A 60 kg person needs 60 grams of protein. More is good. And if you work out, more is necessary because exercise damages muscles and muscles are made of protein. And vegetarians and vegans can get enough protein with a little bit of conscious effort. If you want to simplify your life and not break your head, these are the three easiest ways to hit your protein goals. One, add one or two eggs to every meal dead simple. Two, add a cup of curd, dahi, to every meal. Three, one cup of whey or plant protein powder on days you are not eating protein-rich foods.